get started with the Epson Brightly projector using images. One of the easiest ways to engage students using an image is asking them what they see, what they know, and what they wonder when viewing an image. In this example, I have an image that I want to use to introduce the next unit for my students. To activate prior knowledge, I ask my students to identify what they see. Once the students have either discussed or written down what they see, I ask them what they know or what they can identify in this image. And then I ask my students to discuss or write down what they wonder. While doing this activity, I can have my students approach the front of the class and write in the appro appropriate information, or as a teacher-led activity, I can write their observations. When setting up this activity, I make sure that I'm in whiteboard mode. I select Insert Image and choose the folder icon. I then need to navigate to the folder that contains my images. This would have been set up prior to the activity. I want to make sure that I have my select tool chosen, which will allow me to click on the image and move it around the palette. It will also allow me to grab one of the corners and drag to make the image larger or smaller. In this example, I leave the image large for my students to make observations. Once they have made their observations, I will make the image smaller. Choose the pen tool, and then begin listing my students' observations. If I would like, I can choose the Shapes tool, select the Line option, and draw lines to help organize the content. Another way to use images with your Epson Brightlink is to focus on part of the image within context. In this example, we have an image of senior government officials watching a live feed of the Bin Laden raid. We position the magnifier tool over one of the individuals and ask students to make observations of that individual. The magnifier tool allows us to enlarge while also allowing us to look at the entire image as well. Another example that I would like to share is using images with the Spotlight tool. Click the Add New Page option in the Easy Interactive software and import another image as I did before. I'll make the image full screen and then choose the Spotlight tool from the Other Tools option. The Spotlight tool allows me to focus in on one very specific area without the details of the entire image creating a distraction. I can adjust my Spotlight options by clicking on Other Tools and then the Settings icon. It is here that I can make my spotlight a circle or a square. Another feature with the Easy Interactive Tools is the ability to layer images. In this example, I will import four images that I have previously captured that will help me teach the order of operations for math. As I did before, I will click on Insert Image and import four images in the reverse order that I want them to be displayed. This will layer my images one to four 
when I show them to my students. As I demonstrate this process, you should notice that I am bringing in image number four and then image number three, number two, and number one. I'll then switch back to my select tool and begin working with my students on the order of operations with this given equation. As I discuss with my students the order of operations, I can then reveal each step and actually move them in an order that my students can visually see. Once we have discussed completing everything in the parentheses and exponents, first, I can move that layer to reveal the next step. After addressing any multiplication and division in the equation, I can move on to the addition and subtraction, which will then reveal the correct answer in the last layer. Now let's look at another application of using images in the whiteboard mode. I'll choose the Select Background icon and select one of the background options. After choosing the Grid option, I can now close the Background Selector window and then annotate as I wish. One of the neat features when using the Background tool is that the background stays fixed and you can erase anything that you've written on top of it. For example, I have set up a lesson using the grid background and invite my students up to the front of the room to work the problem. If the student makes a mistake, then I can use the erase tool to erase that portion of the student's work. In this next example, I have found a worksheet that is designed to be printed from a math website. I have positioned the worksheet so that I can see the problems 1 through 10 in my browser window and will now navigate back to the whiteboard mode in the Easy Interactive Tools. I have created a new page and will choose the Select Background option and then choose the desktop option. When I choose the desktop option, the Easy Interactive Tools software will take a screenshot of my desktop and therefore capture the browser window that is open, which in essence captures a digital version of the worksheet. I now have a working copy of the worksheet as a background in whiteboard mode. Another example of using the background tool is annotating over a selection of text. In this example, I have a Langston Hughes poem that I have copied and pasted into a word processing document. With the word processing document on my desktop, I will open the whiteboard mode of the Easy Interactive Tools. I first create a new page, select the background option, and then choose the desktop icon. The Easy Interactive Tools will copy my desktop into the new Easy Interactive Tools page. After I close the selected background window, I can analyze and annotate on top of the poem. In this example, I will demonstrate using the Easy Interactive Tools to create a timeline of events. I have already opened the Easy Interactive Tools in the whiteboard mode and will import the images that I would like to use in my timeline. I begin by clicking on the Insert Image option, navigating to the image, selecting the image, and then choosing Open at the bottom of the window. For the sake of time, I have previously imported images to use in this example. Now that all of my images have been imported into the workspace, 
I will select the Shapes option, choose the Line tool, and a bold line as my main timeline. I can now choose the Select tool and place my images in chronological order. There are many ways to proceed with a timeline activity. I will choose a smaller line to connect my images to the main timeline and allow my students to fill in the year above the timeline and the significance of the image in the space below the image.